I mentioned Coca-Cola, but also in the early part of the domination of capitalism in Latin America, there was, uh, who recognizes it? What, what brand is it? Chiquita Banana, which was United Fruit and now is Chiquita. Uh, Chiquita has a horrible, uh, I mean, it's a really terrorist uh, transnational, not that the only one, but it's uh, the, particularly in the region of Central America and Colombia, uh, the earlier uh, imperialist domination was in the agricultural field, particularly. And uh, it was like a whole farm. It's like in, in Central America and Colombia. And it was like uh, the whole region was a farm, was an extensive farm for the development of the agribusiness with the cheap labor of the place. Uh, and that's where we have heard the Banana Republics, which, by the way, the, the first Banana Republic uh, that uh, per excellence is Honduras. And does anybody know what happened in Honduras last year, which is one year, uh, the anniversary of the 28th of this month? <laughs> there was a, a military coup, which you know we will go later, but uh, Honduras was the essential banana republic. But they also exploited the mines and there have been, you know, glorious struggles of mine workers against US transnational. And again, of the oil, the gas, and every single uh, wealth of those countries were coming up to the United States to the capitals of the United States. And as I, as I mentioned, the banana uh, not only was Honduras, but you know, Colombia, Costa Rica, and uh, other places in Central America. This is a very old uh, 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 picture from those early, from the 30s to the 50s, there were glorious strikes and, and movements uh, against uh, United Fruit then. Uh, which had their, their, um, their agriculture totally controlled by, uh, you know, United Fruits. Um, of course, the products and the profits all went north to the U.S. capitalism. And the people were left with, with very little. They were completely impoverished. But as technology advanced, and I'm doing this very, very uh, rapidly because we're supposed to end at three and it's already 10 to three, so I'm really giving like a telegraphic uh, 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 exposition. Um, if there is a little time that we can, you know, bound in, in question and answer, I really want uh, some feedback from all the, uh, all the talks. So, uh, but as technology, and, and Fred mentioned that, you know, the globalization, the uh, way that the capitalism has advanced, as technology advanced, so did the matter, the matter of exploitation, and, and this deals with the capital destruction and uh, globalization. Uh, but before uh, continuing, I wanted to raise the word of neoliberalism because not everybody is, is uh, aware of this word, but, but in Latin America, for example, it's like an everyday word. And it's important to know at least you know the basic concept. Uh, who has not heard from neoliberalism? Everybody has, has heard about it? That's great. Okay, so maybe I have to skip this. Uh, I'll be very, very quick. It's a set of economic policies and the definite statement of the concrete policies advocated by neoliberalism is often taken to the uh, to be the Washington Consensus, that was in the end. It's a list of policy proposals that appear to have gained consensus approval among the Washington-based International Economic Organization, particularly IMF, and the World Bank. And the main points of neoliberalism include, and this is very important to think of all the things uh, that Fred was talking about, because this, this is really uh, um, um, illustrates what is the rule of the market? Liberating free enterprise or private enterprise from any bonds imposed by the government, you know, by the state. No matter how much social damage this causes, greater openness to international trade and investment, as in NAFTA, reduce wages by de-unionizing workers, that's the destruction of unions, 
and eliminating workers' rights that have been won over many years of struggle. No more price controls. All in all, total freedom of movement for capital, goods, and services. Like, you know, capital has no borders. And we have to turn that around and say workers' struggle has no borders. And second point, uh, one of the basic points is also cutting public expenditure for social services. And I want to raise also neoliberalism. I, I started, they impose it in, in third world countries, but it's coming home to roost. It's right here. We are seeing also a process of neoliberalism. So this is no longer uh, for, for um, uh, Latin America, Asia, and Africa. This is also for the United States. And I think uh, Compañero Ayomi uh, illustrated that in what is happening right here in Detroit. So cutting this like education, care, reducing the safety net for the poor, and the maintenance of roads and bridges and water supply, again in the name of reducing the government's role. Of course, they don't oppose government subsidies and tax benefit for best business, and we've seen that very well, unfortunately. Three is the deregulation. It's reduced government regulation of everything that could diminish profits, including protecting the environment and safety on the job. Well, we saw BP. Four, privatization. State-owned enterprises, goods and services are taken, are given to private, in, private investors. This includes banks, key industries, railroads, toll highways, electricity, schools, hospitals, and even fresh water. Although usually done in the name of great efficiency, which also is often needed, privatization has mainly had the effect of concentrating wealth even more in a few hands and making the public pay even more for its needs. Then the fifth and last that, that I'm raising is eliminating the concept, and this is, you know, they have to have some kind of uh, uh, politi uh, social policy, and this is their social policy. And it's eliminating the concept of, quote unquote, the public good or community, and replacing it with individual responsibility, pressuring the poorest people in a society to find solutions to their lack of health care, education, and social security all by themselves. Then blame them if they fail and call them as they are lazy. So this is part also of the restructuring of capital and globalization that uh, Fred mentioned in his, uh, open, uh, in his talk and also what I only mentioned uh, with its effect in here in Detroit. Now, one of the, I, I, I just uh, put this title because what I'm going to talk next is an example of what this restructuring of capital, of capital and globalization, when Fred mentioned about the intensification of exploitation, there is nothing else that is more illustrative of this than the Machilas. They are a perfect, perfect example. Uh, you cannot see it well there, but these, these are people that are fed into this uh, grinding machine, and it's, you know, it says disaster uh, when it comes, you know, it's destroying the lives of people. And the maquilas. Uh, the maquilas have, you know, the restructuring of capital at the global scale has, has meant the devalorization of, of labor, in, of work in the world. And the big transnational uh, enterprises have propelled a, a, an offensive in, uh, against the working class with the, uh, with the aim of, uh, of increasing the uh, benefits. And my notes are in Spanish, that's why I'm <laughs> I, I think better in Spanish, so that's why I'm hesitating. It's a, I'm translating my own thoughts. 